welcome to the part 6 of this video series. We are covering the Azure DP300 administering the relational database on Azure. So these videos will have really important questions. I would request you to focus on the concepts explained in these videos. In this part we will look at a case study and we will answer questions related to that case study. In this exam, you do get some case studies. So there are different uh, question formats. There are certain questions which have uh, multi option, multiple options and you, the answer can be one answer or multiple answers. Plus you have case studies. You have to go through those big case studies and then answer the questions related to those case studies. Please subscribe to my channel. This keeps me motivated to put some more contents which are informative and which will help you clear the certification exams. In the next few slides, we will look at the case study. This is a very detailed case study. So you can save these screenshots or you can pause this video here and have a read. So if you pause this video and read the case study, so you must have seen there are different sections of this case studies. There is an overview section, there is an existing environment section, network environment, identity environments, and so on. So the main uh, things to focus on is you have to read the entire case study because one line of the case study can uh, change the total approach of answering the question for example uh, in this case if you see database environment this is a section now if there are database related questions you should focus and read this carefully and try to understand it now the these questions usually say that they ask a question and then they say uh, as per the requirements please try to answer or as per the technical requirements please try to answer or as per the business requirements please try to answer now let's look at the questions. Now this question states you need to configure user authentication for server one databases and it must comply to the security and compliance requirements and we need to choose three answers but uh, this should be in sequence. So I would try to search for server one. So if I see server one it is mentioned in the database environment section. Now if I try to read this so it says that there is an on-prem server one and it hosts two databases I mean, there is a single database with i mean it has two single instance with two databases so it's always better to draw a diagram even in the exam you will get a, a scratch pad like if you see the options on the top somewhere here during the exam there is a screen and you can open the scratch pad it is just like a paintbrush and then you can draw a diagram i use that because answering these case studies is a bit uh, cumbersome because you have to remember just too many details to answer the questions. So the question says you have an on-prem server one and it has uh, two databases, one terabyte each. Okay. And then that has to be moved here in elastic pool. Uh, the pool's name is SQL DB1 pool and the database name would be sales SQL DB1. And then there is a, an application which would access this database. So there is a geo replication set. So if you read the entire question, it is focusing a lot on a hybrid benefit use. Okay. What that means is they want to inherit the licenses of Windows servers as well as the databases, SQL Server databases, so that they can do cost optimizations. So that is the benefit of hybrid. 
so you need to configure the user authentication so that people can access this database and you need to do it the user authentication for server one databases that means you have to do it for these databases not post migration but before migration that is how i understand this question now if you try to migrate or do a replication what works best is container databases so if you see this portion it says uh, sql database one uses database fire rules and contained database users this one uses contained database users so that so that means this also is a contained database okay because this most likely would be created from this the migration would happen or a replication would happen so in order to do a trouble free and very efficient replication contained database is important and what is contained database you can migrate everything that is needed is there in the database they do not have to refer an external database for any purpose they do not have to refer even a master database so these are container databases contained databases so contained uh, uh, users can access these databases so the so the first uh, option here create a user in master database is not required it's wrong because these are we just need uh, uh, contained users that's all now the second one says modify the azure sql server administrator account now suppose you want to add new people uh, as a server administrator then you would do this other than that for this scenario there is no need uh, to modify the third one says create contained database users yes this seems correct because uh, in here we did get uh, a clue that this these the database post migration on azure uh, can be referred through contained database users so uh, even on server one we need a contained database user this is correct then the next one says create an azure ad administrator for logical server so server one is not a logical server okay and that's why this option is wrong our question is referring this server one and this is not a logical server now this one connect to the databases by using an azure ad account yes you need an ad account why uh, because if you see here it mentions authenticate database users by using an active directory credential okay so an ad will have to be in use for this is under the security and compliance requirements then the last one says enable the contained database authentication option so you need to enable this the database authentication option uh, and only then the contained database users will work so if you see the sequence the sequence should be this way uh, you should enable the contained database authentication option first you should create a contained database users and then you, you can connect to the databases by using an azure ad account so this is the sequence you can lock this answer we'll move to the next question now this question if you see it's talking about you need to implement a monitoring of sales sql db1 so this is sales sql db1 on azure and it is a part of elastic pool so you need to monitor this database now it says the solution should meet the technical requirements so what are the technical requirements so these are the technical requirements from here till here so we can have a read so primarily what it uh, tells is the maintenance maintenance tasks should be automated 30 databases must kill automatically and on prem infrastructure must be minimized use of that hybrid use benefit should be there and all sql and database metrics related to cpu storage and limits must be analyzed by this okay so this is linked to our question uh, all databases uh, metrics that is related to cpu storage usage and limits must be analyzed using azure built-in functionality that is say for example azure monitor 
so now let us try to answer this so it says you should collect metrics either from the database which means either from just this database or the elastic pool and this database or just the elastic pool that is just this elastic pool and don't worry about this database or we should monitor the server the elastic pool and the database so there is no server I mean it cannot be that way there is a logical server but then we cannot it is immune um, we cannot set a metrics on that in this case in this case we should monitor the elastic pool and the database see the elastic pool why we use elastic pool is because you have multiple databases and then uh, since the question also says that they need to deploy 30 more databases in this pool so there will be uh, a dense pool there will be a dense elastic pool and what happens is when you try to monitor it is always better to monitor the database as well as the pool because the database is ultimately sharing resources from that pool this is a big pool and databases are sharing the resources so you will have to know that which database needs a scale up and even though you have just given the allocated capacity if it needs more resources you need to scale up and hence both needs to be monitored so if i just monitor the database and uh, i know that the cpu and etc uh, has crossed the threshold cpu matrix or the storage matrix and then i would assume that automatically the, the scale up will take care of it but what if the elastic pool doesn't have the capacity that's why because other databases might be using the elastic pool to the same uh, to the same capacity so that's why it is important to monitor both why because the business requirements say that you need to meet the SLA of 99.99 availability you know we cannot get into a scenario where due to the bottleneck the scale up cannot happen and we do not meet this SLA now the next ones uh, the next option here is stream metrics where should we stream so in order to understand this the answer is in the question itself it says how should you collect and stream metrics when you have to stream it is always event hubs storage is not streaming storage is where you know you have those log files and from azure monitor and you store it in storage or if you want to do some extra analysis so you can link azure monitor to talk to azure log analytics and do extra analysis on these logs but this is not called streaming streaming is event hubs where you may you are constantly it's like a middleware or you constantly stream the data and this data can flow to other databases or other applications who can read from this stream and do some real-time processing hence our answers here would be azure event hubs and uh, the elastic pool and the database now let's look at question 3 now you have this sales SQL database and it has performance issues and the question says which two dynamic management views will you use so this database here it has performance issues like this application is trying to access this database and the database is causing a slowness it is not fast it is causing performance issues so one thing to remember here is if you see whenever you see pdw any any uh, dmvs which have the name pdw this applies to parallel data warehouse or synapse analytics the database that we have is a sql database is not a synapse database or a or a parallel data warehouse hence options a and option e uh, we need to strike out because this cannot be an answer we, we are we have to answer from a sql server perspective uh, or azure sql perspective and not from synapse analytics perspective 
now let's look at option b so whenever we see uh, compute node errors first of all even you get this question and you are not sure what to do uh, performance issues usually is not because of errors so we never try to look into errors because uh, if it is a performance if it if it is an error your uh, system would prompt that there is an error it will not be in limbo and you don't know why it is so slow or not getting uh, the cursor back so a common sense errors this b and d is also out of question so a b d and e is out of question so we are left with c and f so if you see option b this dmv is used for polybase so that's why it will not apply in our scenario because our case study is not talking about polybase now the answers are c and f the reason for c and f is because you will you will have to look at your request what are the requests that has been submitted which and these requests uh either the requests what are those requests and then are are those transactions uh, are there any locks on it <clears throat> for example uh, a read lock because of which your request is waiting in the queue because it is not able to read certain records so these two are the final answers i would request you to subscribe to my channel and like my videos see you in the next part